Hello and welcome to Dave Rex Presents. I'm Dave. It's been six months. I've been planning this episode for all of those. It's time. Together, we're going to look at some of your feedback. Then we'll do a quick update on what's happened with Mike since the last episode. And finally, we'll wrap this whole thing up. This will be the finale for me on the Boudet Report. After I released the first episode, Mike blocked me on Twitter anyway. When I wrapped the initial episode of Dave Rex Presents, I had planned to release it and then wait up to a year to make a second episode, partially because I've heard it was just asking for trouble with Mike knowing about it and his crazy fans. I put crazy in quotes because it's nicer than what they get slung at them. Plus, I haven't had that response at all from Sword and Scale fans and honestly, not much from the Mike bashers, but Let's look at a few of the responses that did come my way. First, on February 26th, the premiere date, Mike Boudet emailed me and said, quote, just wanted to say congrats on your debut episode and follow up, end quote. The thing that did surprise me and I didn't expect are a few emails I've been asked to keep out of the podcast because they feel if I told their story, Mike would retaliate. I've agreed because... Well, I like to have the trust of my listeners. But if I'm being honest, I don't know what to make of all this. It's touchy ground. A few things lay before me. Email accounts that hide their identities. Nothing I can present to you as proof. I can't even really discuss the things that are laid out for me. But I want to make something clear on this. It's not something so shocking and so salacious that I'm just stringing you along. It's some of the personal stories from people. So, while I won't give you much more on this, just know I do believe what I've read and seen, but I wouldn't give new information, and what I would could just make me a liar. How's about Reddit, huh? That is where everything really began for this show. Welp, on February 26th, I posted this. Quote, Seven months ago, I asked the sub for help to make a podcast about Mike Boudet. I released today. We accumulated a whopping 68 karma and a hefty 33 comments. So, yeah, here's the thing. People aren't really using this podcast as a Mike hate tool. Anyway, what are some of these comments? Well, in all honesty, they're kind of predictable to the subreddit. Since it wasn't exactly positive, they liked it. But something I would like to address is one post where I got a little childish. Stendhal Syndrome, I hope I said that right, I'm sorry, said, quote, So you hate the guy so much you spend time, effort, and maybe money to do something that literally reaches single-digit viewers. How does that feel? Is this a part of takedown culture, or are you trying to make yourself famous or something off exposing someone? I'm kind of confused here. End quote. I got mouthy, and you know what? Truthfully, it was a stupid exchange on my part. I said, quote unquote, sure, that. From there, things went on, and I upset them. But here's the part I hope you can understand. I'm not catering to every audience. I'm not even a guy who dislikes Mike or Sword and Scale. But I'm at a point where it's not for me. I've enjoyed what I've heard and that doesn't make it my favorite. It's another true crime podcast to me. What I'm trying to say is this. It's about the story to me. The who's, the when's, the what's. But in the way that we who just liked the show and weren't looking to bash Mike nor praise him, could get some information to digest, a starting point, a primer, if you will. I wish I could have snagged that sum up and listened to it in two hours when I was looking into Boudet, so I made it. This wasn't an obsession specifically about Mike. It was about a sum-up primer people could just listen to on this story. One more thing on this. 
I was a jerk. Stendhal syndrome was just responding. Even if it was aggressively, they were prompted to respond that way. Okay, before we stretch this out too long, I got three iTunes reviews. April 18 LA says, Desperate wannabe. One star. Quote, Clearly trying to make yourself relevant by talking about sword and scale. End quote. I mean, I don't think this would be the exact way to make myself relevant, but they're right. Miscellaneous says, what a waste of time. One star. Quote, I feel like this is a podcast for trolls by trolls. I fear this is the future of podcast. Any old person who has time on their hands can now produce a podcast. End quote. I don't know if this is really for trolls, but yeah, any old person can do that. Cool, right? Okay, enough time here. We still have to cover what's happened since the last episode. Like I said at the top of this episode, on Twitter, Mike Boudet blocked my personal account and the Dave and Isaac account from seeing his personal and Sword and Scale accounts. But he didn't block my executive producer. And I guess Twitter was the place to be during these last six months. Primarily two things. An outcry over Mike's addressing someone's weight, or did he? Also, Mike deleting his entire personal Twitter feed. So first things first. On April 2nd, a Twitter user, who I don't want to put out there, it's easy to find if you want to know this person's name. Regardless, she posted this. Quote, If anything happens to me, please make sure at Day covers it on at Sword and Scale. End quote. Here is where the social media shit hit the fan. Boudet responded with this, quote, and she died of mild heart disease and a high cholesterol diet, end quote. So here's the deal. The young lady had a full body photo as her account photo, and she was overweight. Not really by much. Here's the point. Every Boudet hater took the chance and This went big. Mike had tweeted that on the 2nd of April about 1.47 p.m. The Sword and Scale account did get involved. That same evening at 10.01 p.m., the Sword and Scale account posted this, quote, Twitter is amazing. You can say something completely benign, someone can take it out of context, force you to apologize for it, and then delete their original tweet making you look like a fucktard. Watch. End quote. To be sure everybody understood, the Sword and Scale Twitter posted. By the way, I say the Sword and Scale Twitter posted because Mike didn't tweet the response that triggered this response from the company account. He did it from his personal account. Then he moved that battle to the Sword and Scale account by responding to anything with it. The shitstorm got very large. People tweeted to Sword and Scale sponsors and Wondery Media, the podcast network that distributes Sword and Scale through its services and helps with things such as advertising. So, the next day, on April 3rd, at 7.32am, the Sword and Scale Twitter account posted this. Quote, The joke was about heart disease and high cholesterol, which kills over half a million people each year, not weight. End quote. During this, Boudet posted to his Patreon, asking his listeners to go and support his sponsors, and that he would be dropping the price for Sword and Scale Plus listeners for a period. By April 3rd at 12.30 p.m., Boudet posted this to his account his personal Twitter account. Quote, Over the last 24 hours, I've received a range of negative feedback. Strangers I've never met have made fun of my looks and even threatened to physically assault me. 
all because I replied to a listener what I thought at the time was a clever response about how most of our deaths are unremarkable. My comment was in no way intended as body shaming, but I can see easily how it appeared that way. I tried to PM the listener to explain and apologize, but was, understandably, blocked. So I'll leave this here. I'm sorry that I hurt your feelings. I did not mean to do so. Once I started getting attacked, I lashed out and, quote, doubled down. I regret this also. I hate this aspect of my character, and a lot of you are indeed correct that I should, quote, do better. I'm going to be taking some time off of social media. I don't think it's beneficial to me, Sword and Scale, or Wondery for me to be engaging with listeners directly. End quote. To be honest, you can say what you want about it being genuine, but this is a well written apology. However, on April 4th, he posted this to the Sword and Scale account Quote, Over the last two days, we've done a lot of self reflection. We're sorry that we disappointed many of our fans. With the benefit of hindsight, We can now see the impact of our words, and we are reaching out to make amends. To those of you who felt let down, we apologize. To those of you who have been patient and supportive, thank you. It will not happen again. End quote. Before we get to my opinion, which I think I haven't hidden very well, let's look at what Wondery said about this. Wondery tweeted on April 4th at 9.36 a.m. Quote, Over the last two days, one of our shows posted comments on social media that bothered us as well as many of our fans. End quote. Replying to their own tweet in the same minute, quote, The show has since retracted the comments and apologized to its fans, and we have done the same. To those who have been patient and supportive, thank you. This will not happen again. End quote. This was bad. It, it was a mess. Boudet was caught in a situation that was accumulation of years spent upsetting others and replying to hate. I don't necessarily believe he does all of this intentionally, but he clearly likes to egg people on. During the worst parts of this explosion, Mike only pushed harder. On the night of April 2nd, when all this was initiated, at 6.34 p.m., he posted, quote, It's hilarious how many idiots are lying in wait, just sitting there, with nothing better to do, end quote. Then at 9.08 p.m., quote, it's so easy to trigger idiots, end quote. Again, at 9.15 p.m., quote, a high-protein diet can be very beneficial combined with healthy exercise regimen, end quote. Still angry and pushing back, he posts again at 9.17 p.m., In some cases, excess in mobile online exposure can be detrimental. Get up, walk around, get the blood flowing, end quote. Here's the thing. I think Boudet should go hog wild on his personal Twitter. His opinions are his, which, like all opinions, they should belong to the owner. But I also believe he should have kept this out of the sword and scale Twitter, When you refer to the Sword and Scale crew as a team or even staff, you shouldn't really throw them under the bus for something you put your name on. Now, on top of that, have you gotten to the point where you can't distinguish the difference since you are head of the company? Boudet was going to get all kinds of shit for this. But to respond to any of it with that purple profile picture was a mistake. You could have had the excuse, this is mine, I say my things on it. But instead, you posted with Sword and Scale. Then the most problematic part is the tweet from the Sword and Scale account apologizing. Over the last two days, we've done a lot of self-reflection. We're sorry that we disappointed many of our friends. With the benefit of hindsight, we can now see the impact of our words, and we are reaching out to make amends to those who felt let down. We apologize to those of you who have been patient and supportive. Thank you. It will not happen again. We've? Where? We? 
Did your employees help write these tweets? Intentional or not, those tweets and replies belong to you, Mike. Your first apology was much better. To be honest, there was nothing really as far as the small jabs he continued to make over the months. But on May 31st, Boudet deleted all of the tweets on his personal account. He quickly returned and started posting again at a consistent rate on his personal Twitter account. Okay, y'all, I do have a couple more things here. First, on July 29th, I messaged Ben, my executive producer, and said, we need to set a date for the final Mike Boudet episode. I was putting it together and received an email. Before I read it, let me read you a portion of the initial email exchange I had with Mike in July of 2017. That's when he respectfully declined my request for an interview. I said, quote, I appreciate your reply and understand your decline. Thank you for the screenshots. I will use them. I want to make sure, though, as I do have your permission to use them, do I also have your permission to read the response to my initial request? He replied saying, I sent the email, so I have no expectation of privacy. If you choose to publish what I said, that's your choice. I just ask that, if you do, you publish it in its entirety without editing it. Which I did. But with that in mind, on July 30th this year, I got an email from feedback at swordandscale.com. Quote, Hey Dave, I wanted to reach out now that some time has passed. I can see that you've not done any other episodes on your experimental podcast, and I know that the reaction to your first episode was somewhat mixed. I'm wondering why you would choose to keep a one-episode podcast up and live on your site for this long. And I'm reaching out to ask you if you'd be kind enough to take it down. If it's not serving you any purpose and is only out there in a negative light, then I don't see why you would choose to keep it up there. Would you consider removing it and taking down the feed? It does you no good, and it only does me harm. Kind regards, Mike Boudet. End quote. Now, I actually have a reason for keeping it up. And so I replied with this. Quote, Hey, Mike, I've chosen to keep it up for the same reason I spent money and time putting up my old shows. Well before Dave Rex Presents, I wanted to have everything on the site. I made a personal pledge that I would make all the content I've previously released available. I put together the entire libraries, purchased Libsyn feeds for them, fixed the audio as best I could, created web pages and feed descriptions. All of this from content I had released on other platforms and other sites. I know you understand, but I did this for content I made as a kid in 2011. It's not great. It's messy and a lot of trial and error, but I love podcasts. I understand the reasons a creator would remove the episodes. For me, though, it's disappointing when I can't find an old show slash episode from a new favorite host. With all that said, no, I won't consider taking it down. Thanks. Dave. End quote. So here's the thing. For both episodes of the show in this feed, I've accumulated 5,200 unique downloads based on Libsyn statistics. That's after six months. Now, I appreciate every single one, genuinely. But this isn't hurting Sword and Scale. Sword and Scale is getting a million plus downloads per episode. This podcast isn't close or even near something like that, nor will it be. So honestly, Boudet, I promise, I'm not getting popularity out of this. And I bet you're not losing listeners because of me. I agree that the extreme comments and hate Mike receives are unwarranted. I realize some may disagree with that, but I don't think the extremity of a few are warranted. That being said, This doesn't lie solely on the shoulders of internet trolls. Boudet enjoys the fire. He enjoys fighting it with more fire. That doesn't mean he'll get so out of sorts he'll make a comment to kill his show. To think that any person except Mike will end Sword and Scale is silly to me. Boudet can say whatever he wants. He should be allowed. And the backlash could be great, but at the end of it all, his... 
Twitter account for Sword and Scale boasts over 32,000 followers. Blue Day's personal account has 8,000 followers. Mike's actions as a person on social media aren't purely negative. And when they are, then maybe 40,000 people see that. Again, over a million downloads per episode. He's fine. The only way I see it end to sort in the scale is if Mike makes the decision to end it. Do I personally want to see an end to sort in the scale? No, I don't. Mike is a human. Humans hurt. They cry. They get depressed. I actually have it on shockingly good authority that Boudet has been in more than a bad place. He's been shaken to a crumbling mess. That is something we could all understand, but often it's forgotten. We don't try to hide that from people around the world whilst looking into depraved stories. I imagine it takes a toll on a person. Plus, people like the show. They like the stories. They feel empathy and take with them a little more of the reality of our world. Sword and Scale isn't a bad thing. It's a show. There's so damn many of every kind. And podcasting is part of that. True crime podcasts are a part of that. And Sword and Scale is one of those. It's a small portion of a large audience. And don't get me wrong, Sword and Scale hits a lot of top 100 podcast lists and top 10 or even 5 true crime podcast lists. It's because he's good at what he does. Let's take a short refresher here. Audio engineer history, a few music albums, and literally has a marketing business major from Florida International University. 3.85 GPA, if you're curious. He graduated in 2009. Before that, between 2005 and 2006, he went to Georgia State University and obtained a business major. 3.9 3.9 GPA. Mike already had a job in internet marketing as a full time manager starting in 2000. Since then, he has always worked in pay per click advertising and search engine optimization, or just internet marketing. This is all from the resume on his website, which was there until November 5th, 2016, at least according to archive.org. Look, the point is this. He had four podcasts before Sword and Scale, and yeah, I found evidence of a fourth on his website, MikeBoudet.com, which is where we just were there. The fourth podcast, just titled Internet Marketing with Mike Boudet, which leads directly into the next point. The guy is actually trained in this. He has marketing strategies. He knows how to play a game, look ahead on a product. Mike literally spent years and years working to put things in front of you. Boudet is a marketing guy, but this marketing guy is also the host. So for those who don't like Boudet, and yes, even those who he has wronged, I would say don't give him a download. Don't go to his site. Your silence doesn't create an echo chamber. That exists no matter what. So walk away. The sounds will drive you mad. But on the flip, if you like Mike or just Sword and Scale, listen, share. It really is that simple, and it really does help him that much. Oh, and if you want more content, give to the Patreon. I've been there for months. Damn, it'll feel good to get out. I hope you enjoyed the odd ride, and I hope you'll join me on the next one. It's an entirely different story and will be coming in a couple months. But because you've stuck it out with me, I'm going to have a couple links to things I've found and not yet revealed. One is a link on archive.org to the only remaining episodes of Am I Bugging You? Mike's comedy podcast and an archive.org link to one episode of Universe of Mystery that wasn't released on the Patreon feed. You'll find a handful of other links and photos. Just go to DaveRex.net. All right, everybody, this is the end of my journey down Boudet Lane. I'm done. After over a year of following this story, I'm wrapping. You've been a wonderful audience, and I appreciate your time and listening and waiting for this finale. Finally, thank you to all my previous guests, 
Mike Bidet, Sword and Scale, and Ben Colbert, my executive producer. The person who listened to me for hours on end and helped me work through this story. This experience has been incredible and I have learned so much. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great day, evening, and life.